John, what excited you about the opportunity to come and work at First Point USA? I think firstly, I look back at my time at school and I actually applied to do something and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Thankfully, rugby came along for me and kind of essentially saved the day and took that decision out of my hands. But I didn't know where I wanted to go. So when, I, when, Rob, uh, when Andrew approached me about potentially doing something with First Point, I thought, I wish I'd had that knowledge and that opportunity to explore a bit further. So I think there's so much opportunity from you know, schools to different stakeholders for this to be something so exciting for people to be involved with. So your Director of Rugby at First Point USA, describe your new role to us. <laughs> That's an easy one, isn't it? Um, I think for me, I'm trying to engage with stakeholders, with schools, with institutions, uh, with clubs that have, you know, kids, pupils, teenagers that maybe don't know about these opportunities, because I certainly didn't and it would have been available when I finished school. So trying to make them aware of the opportunities and then create the link to First Point so that they can pass on that information to parents, to children, to give them, I guess, a full tapestry to choose from when they're leaving school or whatever they're doing to make that the best decision. And what do you think would make a US university appealing to an aspiring young rugby player in the UK? The weather, probably. <laughs> um, I just think the opportunity, I think for me, not everyone's going to play professional sport, and that's the reality, but I think for me, when I left school, all my friends that played a high level of rugby at school and other sports, when they, when they left, it kind of, that was it. The opportunity to go to America and play in front of big crowds in rugby and other sports, the facilities are incredible. You're going to get arguably one of the best educations you could get and potentially get a full scholarship for. All these things add up to, for me, if I, if I hadn't gone into professional rugby, it would have been a no-brainer, you know, college, college uh, campus lifestyle, the weather, uh, culture change. I think for me, you'd come back from that experience and much, much more grown up than certainly most of my friends were when they left university. And can you describe what we'd be looking for in a, in a prospective student athlete rugby team? I think probably, first of all, you, your sport has to be to a high level. There's no point trying to do it if, if you're not serious about your sport. Um, and then academia. You know, you're going to some of these top colleges, universities in the States, there's an expectation of a standard of where you need to be. So I think pretty, you're going to have to be pretty driven as well. You're going to have to be ambitious. Um, it's not going to be for everyone. Not, you know, the comfort of home is something, but probably people that are probably looking to that adventurous side of them to do something a bit different than the, the, the sort of the norm and maybe go on that path less trodden. And if somebody was interested in exploring a, a rugby scholarship opportunity, what, what advice would you give them? I think get in touch. And, and if, you, if you hear about it through the schools or whoever you hear through, just get as much information as you can. Certainly, again, I go back to when I left school, it was very, I was very much pigeonholed into these are the universities, these are your options, and it was never even discussed. I think at that age you have, you know, the world's your oyster at that age you know, look into it, pick the best option. It might not be first one, but at least have a look at it, explore the options, see what the possibilities look like. And I guarantee you, it would be very interesting. And when the Rugby World Cup's going to the stadium in 10 years time, I guess it must be an exciting time to be a, a young rugby player in, in the United States. You're at MLR now. Some of the names going out, some of the biggest names in rugby have, have gone out there to play in the league. And it's, one, it's a real gross generalization, but when anyone in America gets behind a sport and when it's going to the Olympics and when it's going to be a Rugby World Cup there, it's going to be massive. So yeah, 10 years seems like a long way away, but by the time you're, maybe you're in fourth year of school now, by the time you leave, the World Cup's going to be a couple of years away and who knows what state you know, rugby will be like in America at that point, but it will be massive. The build up, the hype, the excitement, the facilities, all that stuff is geared towards pushing rugby massive in the States. And in your playing career, John, have you had the, the opportunity to go out and play in the States and see some of the facilities? <laughs> I actually didn't. I actually was meant to tour there three times, but I had shoulder surgery every time, <laughs> so I missed it. But I, I mean, I think when we were, we toured Texas, we toured, where else did we tour? We went, we went to Canada, which was slightly different, but the guys had the best time. From like a, a rugby point of view, it was great, but like socially, culturally, so different even for guys that play in professional rugby to go and see that side of the world and enjoy it. So it's actually one of those places I'm gutted I didn't get to go and play.